All right, you guys, so just doing a review for this Alpha ESS SP300 solar panel. Um, Alpha ESS did send me two of their 300 watt solar panels. So, I got, so I've got one panel unfolded on the floor right over here. And when the panel is unfolded, it does have a 93 inch length. When it's folded up just like that, it does have a 25 inch length. So just make sure that you have enough space for the uh, panel to completely unfold so it can take full advantage of the uh, sun exposure. And so just taking a look at the uh, panel folded up, it does have this large yellow handle that makes it easier to carry around. Um, in order to use the panel, it does have this Anderson uh, cable connector. That is the only way to use the panel. Um, so just so you know, it doesn't have any other uh, cables or ports. And so what I'm going to be using these uh, panels for is recharging this uh, Alpha ESS Blackby 2000 power station that I that I have reviewed. Um, I'll leave the full review for the Blackby 2000 in the uh, description below. But uh, yeah, just taking a look at the uh, power station real quick. I will be using this um, dual Anderson uh, cable that uh, came with the power station. And what I'm going to use this for <laughs> is to input it into the um, Anderson input port over the back of the panel uh, because this power station does have a 600 watt uh, solar input so that's pretty awesome and these panels are going to be perfect to test out the uh, 600 watt solar charging however I do have to wait for a sunny day because it is really cloudy today and so what's included in the box with the panel is this uh, carrying case uh, a really large carrying case of course for a large solar panel and just opening it up just like that um, in this compartment right over here this is where you would place this panel into and when you close it up it's going to stay in place really well um, these three columns right over here are meant for these steel kickstands um, yes so this solar panel does come with steel kickstands i wasn't expecting this but i'm not complaining either but at the same time i was wondering why alpha ess didn't just have the kickstands built into the solar panels but yeah this is the this is how you would set up the the kickstand it has these like support uh, beams right over here that you would um, just latch onto these screws and you can adjust it at two angles, either this, um, you know, this more up upwards facing angle or you can have it um, at a more steeper angle and have the panels facing more straight just like that. And so are these kickstands good? Um, yeah, they're pretty good. Uh, when I first started to use the solar panels, I was a little confused on how to set these up. <laughs> but it's pretty easy um all i did was just i took the solar panel i completely unfolded it outside and i placed one kickstand to the right of the solar panel first then i took another kickstand and i placed it to the left of the solar panel and then i took the final kickstand and i placed it in the middle and that just stabilizes everything and it has been windy the past few days and these kickstands have not given up um, you know, they didn't fall over the uh, solar panel to fall over. That did not happen. So I say that these steel solar panels are a little bit better than, um, you know, your average kickstands that are built into solar panels. You know, those type of fabric ones. These do seem a lot more stable. They just caught me off guard when I opened the uh, packaging up. But yeah, they perform just fine. Um, it does have this lip right over here that you would place the panel into. It would just go in just like that. And uh, so, yeah, I mean, they're pretty stable, uh, pretty easy to set up once you get used to it. And right over here, um, also in the box, you do get this uh, longer Anderson cable, um, the manual, and a 12-month warranty card. And so the manual, right over here, it has the specifications. In case you're wondering what these specs are, there they are. Uh, maximum power is 300 watts. The model number is SP300. And there they are. What's included in the box is what I just went over. And so, yeah, um, there we go. That's what's included in the box. And these are the solar panels themselves. I'm just going to wait for a sunny uh, day with clear skies because it has been um, cloudy these past few days. And uh, of course, when I need to review solar panels, it just becomes cloudy for days on end. Um, I have done testing with these solar panels on cloudy days just like this. And I managed to get about 100 watts of solar input to the Blackby 2000 power station which is pretty good for, for a cloudy day. But once again, I don't want to show you guys just a half measure test. I want to, I want to use these solar panels um, at their maximum power to see what's the most I can get from them. But yeah, these, these do work well in, on cloudy days. It's not like you're going to be getting a zero wattage output from them. But of course, for a optimal test, I want to do it on a sunny day with full sun exposure, hit, hitting the two panels and um, see if I can get this... Uh, uh, Black P2000 power station charging at about maybe 300 to 400 watts, maybe even 500 watts 
of solar input. And so yeah, I'm gonna wait for a sunny day. I'm gonna come right back and we'll do that uh, solar uh, recharging test using these uh, two SP300 solar panels. All right, you guys, so actually for test number one, I'm just gonna do it on a cloudy day while I'm waiting for a full uh, sunny day. As you can see, the sky is pretty cloudy. That's the sun right over there. And so um, I've got the two panels set up right over here and over the back, I have this uh, dual channel Anderson cable connected to the panels. One right over here and one and one right over here and since it's, and since it's a cloudy day i'm not using the cake stands but i will be using the cake stands on a sunny day and um thankfully the uh solar recharging is actually pretty good um currently have a oh man what well, on earth let me see if i can um yeah there we go i uh, currently have a 109 watt input going on it does fluctuate a bit um i've gotten up to 170 watts um depending on the uh, sunlight exposure hitting the panels <clears throat> And in my opinion, this is pretty good, um, even though I'm using two uh, solar panels that are, that are rated for 300 watts. I'm sorry if the uh, if you can't really see the screen because it keeps um, taking out of focus and in focus. 136 watts right now. Um, you know, I can get to full recharge within 10 hours. Of course, that's not going to happen because the sun's not going to be up for that long. Um, that is the solar recharging going on on a cloudy day, that is. Right now, we're at 141 watts. That's actually pretty impressive. And uh, yeah, that is a cloudy day test. Let me go ahead and set a timer, um, or a stopwatch rather. Um, actually, no, let me just check the timer real quick. And so right now it's uh, two o'clock. I'm gonna come back in maybe two hours, maybe three hours to see how much capacity I'm able to fill up on a cloudy day. And uh, yeah, I'll be right back to show you guys the progress. Just uh, one more zoom out real quick right over here. Show you guys what's going on and yeah i will be right back to see the results and also one thing i want to mention is that i'm actually able to activate the ac outlet section while i'm slowly recharging the unit <laughs> because in my full review for this bakby 2000 power station i could not use the ac outlet i could not do ac pass through charging um when recharging this power station through its ac input but when i'm solar recharging the power station i am actually able to use the ac outlets so that's actually pretty surprising and also a pretty helpful something that I just found that I thought I would tell you guys and I will be right back in about um, three hours to, sh to show the progress on the uh, solar recharging to see how much we can actually fill up on a cloudy day. All right guys so just back after about three hours the sun has practically gone down because the panels are like not getting any power I mean the uh, power station is recharging at only one watt and so I just consider that the uh, sun is down and gone for the day. And so yeah, about three hours later, we started at two o'clock, it's five o'clock now, and I think the uh, power station was at about 34%, and we're now at 41%. And so yeah, I mean, that's what you can expect on a cloudy day with these two solar panels. Um, but once again, I, this was only a three hour recharge test, um, and also it was a cloudy day, so the wattage input for the unit was really low. And so yeah, for my next test, I'm gonna be doing it on a uh, clear sky, sunny day, hopefully that's pretty soon, hopefully tomorrow. And I'm, gonna be, and I'm gonna be setting up the panels then to see how much more of a wattage input I can get, which should probably be considerably higher. And yeah, just to show you guys, there's like nothing. I mean, it's it's late. And so yeah, that is the cloudy day test, I suppose you could say, for these uh, 300 watt solar panels. And I will be back to do a clear sky, sunny day uh, recharge test. All right, you guys, so this is the next day. Um, so it's not exactly a full sun exposure day. As you can see, there are still clouds in the sky because I thought it was gonna be a clear sky day, but unfortunately, the clouds came in. Um, but let me just show you guys how I set up the kickstands. Uh, so just right up here, as you can see, the sun exposure is pretty decent. And the panels are facing upward. And yeah, so this is how I set up the panels. I set up the um, right one first, and then the left one, and then finally the third one. And it's just, it's just really that simple. Um, I know, uh, having built-in kickstands for the solar panel does make it easier to set up but these ones also don't move around um <clears throat> in comparison to the fabric ones so just something to know i haven't had one like just plop over um and you know it just ruins the entire thing uh so yeah i mean that's just one benefit of these type of steel uh kickstands and once i've got the hang of uh, using them um it's just really easy to set up it just takes a few seconds honestly and right and yeah right over here i do have the uh, angle set to a wider angle so the uh, panels are facing um uh upward more it would make more sense to have the panels facing more straight if the uh, sun is going down or the sun is coming up and so yeah that's just what's happening right now and as you can see 
the uh, sun exposure is decent but once again this isn't exactly full-on sun exposure because they're being because the sun's being covered by some clouds right now and for the charging power I am getting 139 watts from both the panels at the same time um, but of course it does fluctuate depending on the uh, intensity of the uh, sun exposure and uh, so yeah for this test I'm just gonna go ahead and do it like I did yesterday um, it is 1140 right now I'm gonna, I'm gonna come back once the uh, sun's coming down because I don't think we're getting rain today so I think it's safe to actually keep the uh, power station and the panels outside um, but that said these panels are rated at IP67 um, so they can withstand rain um, but you know once again the power station is not IP67 water resistance rated uh, but yeah there we go um, I'll be right back to see how much of that capacity I can fill up on a uh, partially cloudy day because it's not exactly too cloudy we're getting some pretty good sun and uh, yeah I will be right back all right you guys so just back at about 450 so I started this test at about 1130 I think and so after about five hours um, I've got the power station at about 60 percent and we started at about 34 percent I think so take that as you want um you know once again this was not a clear sky day they, this was a pretty cloudy day um a little bit more uh sun exposure on the panels than uh, yesterday hopefully tomorrow um i'm pretty sure i think we're going to be getting clear skies so that'll be a full-on test or whatever other day that i can get clear skies and full sun exposure on the panels um but yeah there we go um and i will be right back with another test tomorrow hopefully all right, you guys, so just back for one final test for these uh, 300 watt solar panels. Um, it is a pretty clear sky day. Um, just a few misty clouds in front of the sun. But uh, currently I've got a 345 watt um, input speed going on for this uh, power station. And the sun exposure on the panels is pretty good. Um, I don't, I, I'm not using the kick stands right now because I think this is the best angle for the panels for max sun exposure. And uh, yeah, 357 watts. The power station is going to be recharged within about an hour. Um, I started this test at about 60%, which was at about, I think, um, 11, like 10. It's 11.51 right now. Um, and so yeah, I'm just going to come back once the power station is at 100%. Um, oh, it just dropped down to a, to a uh, two hour recharge time and back to one hour right there. <laughs> Um, but once again, these are rated for 300 watts, so I, so I should be averaging to about 400 to 500. I'm not too sure why. Maybe this still isn't um, the max uh, power of the panels. Um, yeah, I mean, once again, I'm not too sure. I mean, it is winter right now. I'm not too sure if that makes a difference or not. Um, it could also be the temperature um, because it is like about 50, 50 degrees outside right now. Um, and so yeah, I'll be right back to see if the uh, power station is actually able to recharge back to 100% once I get back And there we go. I'll just show you guys a closer look at the panels. That is one right there And that is one right there. They're both just flat on the floor for a uh, better sun exposure um, Because the Sun is just right above us right now All right, I will be right back all right, you guys, so just back at 439, and the power station is fully charged, and there are a lot of birds talking right now. Um, <laughs> sorry about that. And so I was able to get the uh, power station from 60 to 100% in the course of about, I'd say, like, three hours. I mean, it didn't just reach 100%. It's been at 100% for probably, for probably the past two hours. And so, yeah, that's what's happening right there. And uh, yeah, I mean, it's completely possible to recharge this power station solely using these uh, 300 watt solar panels, which is uh, which is what I would recommend using them with, because uh, the unit does have a 600 watt solar input. So the higher wattage solar panels that you have, the better, especially for a high high capacity power station like this one. And uh, yeah, there we go. All right, you guys. So just back inside with the uh, solar panels. Um, and so just my final thoughts on using these. Um, they're pretty good they're pretty powerful as well given that you have um direct sun exposure you know full-on sunlight that's when these panels and any and any other solar panel really is going to work really well is when they receive that full sun exposure and in this case of my testing you know i had like three tests done on three separate days on the cloudy on the uh, part on the cloudy day on the partial cloudy day and probably the full sun exposure day was which was today um but at the same time i mean today i there were still clouds in front of the sun and you know, I wasn't gonna wait another like few days to make another segment of the video. And so I just went, you know, 
what the heck, I just gotta get this done. And so when I had the solar panels outside, I did periodically uh, go outside to, to see the wattage input for the uh, Block B2000 power station. The highest I saw it go was up to about like 450 watts. <clears throat> And that was like that would bring like each of the panels to about 225 watts each which is close enough to at least 300 watts because you know if you get a 300 watt solar panel or a 200 watt solar panel they won't get to their max um wattage um at least mo in most cases that's not how they work they get at least like a, f a few like maybe 50 wattage lower than they're actually rated for and in this case uh this uh, 300 watt solar panel is a monocrystalline one with a ETFE uh, film that, that gives it more transparency and rigidness. And uh, so yeah, um, that is the review for the Alpha ESS uh, 300, 300 watt solar panels. These solar panels can be used to recharge any other power station, given that you have the right port on the power station that you're recharging them with, or if you have the right adapter, because you can get like a DC5525 to Anderson uh, connector, and then you can use this solar panel to recharge it with. Um, so just something to know, these solar panels are not just um, compatible with uh, Alpha ESS's own power stations. They can be used with any other device or for any other purposes, given that you have the right connections. And so down in the description below, I will have a link to the product page uh, for these solar panels, as well as a link to the uh, review article that I've written over at chargerharbor.com. And I will see you all in the next review. All right. Goodbye.